Yoshikage Kara, a Moryu resident who happened to be a serial killer that went unnoticed for years and went practically undetected his whole life. He is a prolific serial killer whose routine was shaken up by the ghost of his first victim, Remy, who begged the Joseph Star Group to find him and kill him, basically. As a stand user, Kiro wields the powerful stand Killer Queen that has a whole shit ton of explosive related abilities. So how strong is this murderer? Now in comparison to other stands, Killer Queen isn't really that physically strong of a stand, considering especially considering the fact that he's on the ropes in 90% of his fights. Like, seriously, he got shat on by a severely injured Jotaro. Though according to things like the Jojo Veller, Killer Queen is a high basic performance stand, basically, and his power and speed are considerable, quote unquote. The only fights where he actually dominated his opponents is the fights he got into with Shikashi, since he was able to do things like destroy Shikashi's harvest with just a flurry of punches and the fight Kira had with, you know, Koichi. Killer Queen being able to physically overpower Koichi's Echoes Act 3 and punch through Koichi, turning him into a donut. So, Killer Queen is able to fight with Crazy Diamond, so you could say that Josuke was likely holding back and was just super casual. Even then, Josuke's Crazy Diamond can be skilled anywhere from large town to city level. I'll link my Josuke video down below if you want to see my reason to scale Josuke that high. So, during the sheer heart attack arc, Killer Queen was able to lift its own hand despite being weighed down by Echo Attack 3, which has been calculated to be around 16 tons, if not exceeding that weight. What's most impressive about Killer Queen isn't its physical strength, it's the powers it possesses. Killer Queen's first bomb allows Killer Queen or even Kira sometimes turning he or his stand touches into a bomb of his fingertips, according to Jump Remix. These explosives are so potent, yet they don't leave any evidence of there being a body there, which helped Kara go 15 years without being caught from the police. He can even control the size of these explosives in advance and can potentially control the sound of them, since Josuke and Okiyasu didn't even realize Shikishi died initially due to Kira's explosives. Kira himself is not invulnerable to the blasts either, and must take caution to avoid getting caught within his blasts as he, you know, is risk, as he has the risk to getting hurt or killed. Plus, only one bomb can be created at a time, and must be detonated before creating an entirely new one. And even though Killer Queen doesn't produce duds, they can still be rendered mute if placed within a vacuum as Kira's ignition bombs need air to initiate the combustion process process and will fail to explode until there's air to be introduced. According to guidebooks, this ability is able to shatter the flesh from the inside, possibly suggesting that this ability has some sort of their ability negation, but that's up to you to decide whether or not he actually does have a form of their ability negation. There's also Stray Cat. Kira decided to raise Stray Cat for the purpose of making use of its ability to manipulate the ability and combining it with his ability to create long-ranged attacks. Stray Cat has the ability to transmutate air bubbles into ignition bombs of both varieties of remote detonation and contact bombs. So there's a major downside of this. Kira must time the detonation manually and has such he risks them losing lethality if mistimed. Here is also Yoshikage's second bomb, Sheer Heart Attack. Sheer Heart Attack is a small tank-like autopilot substand that is deployed from Killer Queen's left hand. This stand can function even though Kira is well over 50 meters away. Compare that to most stands that have been said and were implied to get weaker the further away they are from the user. Guidebooks claim that Sheer Heart Attack 
can go an infinite distance away from Kira, and this second bomb can only go back to Kira if it finishes off its targets. It usually targets whatever is the hottest thing within its vision and attempts to blast it, or blow it up, which is its greatest flaw because it can easily be fooled into aiming for things other than the intended target as long as it's a, you know, continuous heat source exceeding that of the victim's presence. But to give sheer heart attack credit to Stan is very, very incredible, to say the least. Being able to break Star Platinum's guard, though I wouldn't say that sheer heart attack would scale to Prime Star since Jotaro was nerfed in Part 4, plus it seemed like it mainly affected Jotaro himself and not Star. Sheer heart attack is also able to survive multiple aura aura punches from this nerf star platinum and also survived a daughter rush from Crazy Diamond. Guidebooks for the series have been shown implying that part 8 and part 4 sheer heart attack has the same destructive output. Part 8 sheer heart attack caused a massive earthquake which has been calculated to have an energy output of around 35.6 tons of TNT so sheer heart attack is a Hard to kill sub stand that is fairly powerful, especially if you're a stand that relies on physical power. So he wouldn't really go do well against like cream or the hand since they literally raise things from existence. And lastly, there is Kira's third bomb, Bites the Dust. The primary objective of this ability is that this ability attaches itself to a host, and if anyone tries to find the true identity of Kara via this host, that event would trigger this ability. For example, just the act of uncovering Kara's identity by questioning the host, in the case of the main series, that being Hayato, would trigger this ability, which is mentioning Kira's name would also activate this ability. No matter how the ability is activated and by whatever method that one re released Kira's true identity, Bites Dust will just be activated, really. When Bites Dust is activated, a mini Killer Queen would jump into the eyes of anyone who knows his true identity, simultaneously blowing them up. And due to the due to seeing this mini killer queen, it means there's practically nowhere no way to stop this ability. It would have been in your eyes before you could actually realistically do anything. And after blowing up the target, Bite Dust's main ability would kick in, that being able to quote unquote blow away time by an hour approximately. The only ones remembering the hour that Bites Dust blew away is Kira himself and the initial Bites Dust host. Again, in the case of part 4, that being Hayato. Because of Bites Dust, Kira can potentially create entirely new timelines. From that point onward, time would just continue as if nothing happened, time repeating itself as many times as possible, as many times as by dust can possibly be activated, really. With people who have absolutely nothing to do with by dust's ability repeating the same actions time and time again. So the host can do all they can with the knowledge they have to change this timeline for better or worse. Kirit would remember everything that happened during the initial detonation, as seen at the end of part 4 when he's causing, you know, Bites Dust. Following this detonation, he would be unaware of what happens in the blown away time unless he deactivates the ability. Everything that happened in the past blown away timeline and the new timeline would just repeat itself unless the host of Bites Dust tries and changes this timeline. All f things that break once will eventually break again while the ability is in effect and once the appropriate time occurs, those blown up in a pr 
previous time loop will eventually break again, as well as the timeline is eradicated by fate and spontaneously combusts. Doing so actually does protect Yoshikage by killing the people who acted against Yoshikage while removing the fact that the host never met with the v victims or that his identity was rev ever revealed in the first place. And if he deactivated the ability, especially if all the darkest four bites dust are killed before time loops, these deaths will become a fact and remain as such in this timeline. More so, Bites Dust is harmless to the host cho chosen, and will actually prevent any harm to said host, even from physical blows from Kira himself. Going to the point where Bites Dust would actually pre prevent the host from doing things like committing suicide and so on and so forth. Even though Bites of Dust is an overwhelming powerful ability, it does have a few major flaws, that being one of them being the fact that Bites of Dust will cease its effects, and whoever died from the fate of their explosive grave would be saved from that specific fate. Not to mention, Kira can't really use Killer Queen if this ability is activated and attached to its host meaning he's more vulnerable in comparison to the average stand user and as of vulnerable as the average human. And because of this, he needs to deactivate Bice Dust to protect himself from his enemies. In this case, it's the Mario Cho gang, pretty much. Or the Mario Warriors, whatever you want to call them. So, in conclusion, Kira's Killer Queen is about town to city level at most if we're talking about you understand know, strength like physical strength and AP scaling though Kira's killer queen isn't a like, physically strong stand but in comparison to something as weak as say Herbert Purple or stand similar killer queen looks like a fucking god in terms of physical strength but the most impressive thing as I've shown in this video is that Killer Queen holds some of the most broken abilities in anime. Like, Bites to Dust is fucking weird, to say the least. Speaking about Bites to Dust, you might be able to make a universal plus argument for Kira and the Bites to Dust due to the fact that Bites to Dust does quote unquote blow away time, but that I doubt that, considering that. Most JoJo characters have a lot of abilities, abilities that would fall under the whole unscalable hacks ability stuff. What I mean by unscalable hacks abilities is in the sense of you can't scale it to the character's AP. But again, that's up for you to decide. Anyway, see ya.